Hey everyone, my name is Dylan from Gunspot.com and today I'm here for the ArmoryLife.com and we're going to be talking about creating your own ballistic gelatin. If you've ever wanted to shoot a bullet into ballistic gelatin because you see everybody else do it on YouTube and it looks super cool, then this video is for you. So if you've ever priced ballistic gelatin, it can actually be pretty expensive. Uh, the standard FBI testing block, which is six inches by six inches and 16 inches long, is about $129 if you look for it online. Now in this video, if you do what I'm telling you, you're actually going to end up spending a little bit more money, but the difference is instead of getting one block, you're going to be able to make about four or five for yourself. Now we haven't been making ballistic gel forever and I'm not in the FBI testing laboratory or anything like that, so we don't know everything there is to know about it, but that goes to prove the point that you at home, in your kitchen or in your garage, whatever, you can make ballistic gelatin for yourself to take to the range. It's really not that hard to do and it doesn't have to be a lot of pressure either. Now, will your gelatin at home 100% live up to the FBI standards? Maybe not, but nonetheless, you are going to be able to test bullet expansion and see it through intermediate barriers and a variety of things like that, just like we've done here on the channel. Okay, let's go through our list of required materials. We actually ordered the FBI mold for this and we ordered it from Midway USA, so it's a six by six by 16 inch long mold and that set us back about $69. Then believe it or not, from Walmart, we ordered a 10 pound box of unflavored colorless gelatin for about $89. And really besides a range top stove and some pretty big pots for water, that's really about all you're gonna need. Okay, so here's where we're going to get into some differing opinions when it comes to the recipe for making the ballistic gelatin. Ours is really simple, so don't worry, we're not gonna overcomplicate it. But if you look online, some people are going to say for every one ounce of gel, you need eight ounces of water, or for every one ounce of gel, you need 13 ounces of water. For our mixture, we've done nine liters of water and two liters of gel. So my advice would be you could either do what we're doing or you could go find your own recipe online. But from here on out, whatever recipe you use, it's really going to be pretty much the same as far as putting it together. Now the first thing you gotta do is you gotta measure out your water and put it in pots that will fit on your stove and then you've gotta start warming your water up. The hotter your water, the faster you're going to make your gel, but it's also going to make the block less clear. Now that being said, we boiled our water. We put our water on the range top and we brought both pots to a slight boil, really mainly a similar. It wasn't really bubbling yet, but where you could see some simmering and some steam coming off of it. From there, we poured all of our water into a bigger container. It's best to go ahead and pour the water in first because you're going to get less clumps and things like that. And now it's time to measure out your gelatin and add it to your water. It's also best if you mix your product along the bottom and don't do it too quick. We don't wanna introduce any air bubbles or any air into the formula that we're making. If you do that, you're going to end up with a less desirable gel block, so make sure that you're mixing down low in the pot. We used a really long drill bit on our drill and we used it at a very low power setting so that it didn't mix super quick. I've seen a lot of people say that a metal spoon or a wooden spoon works really well for this too. I'd be really careful using any wire whisks because like I said, you don't wanna introduce any air to this. Just make sure that whatever you're mixing with, you keep it below the surface of the water and mix slowly. Once you've poured in all your ballistic gelatin, whatever you're using to mix, you wanna make sure that you go around and bust up as many clumps as possible. On occasion, we have had some really hard clumps that just won't break, and it's really best to go ahead and fish those out while you can right now. The next thing to do is going to be to pour it in your mold. But before you can pour it in your mold, you really need to spray some nonstick cooking spray all around the mold. When you go to get it out, this is going to make it a ton easier and make no mistake, when you go to get out of the mold, it's actually going to be very tough to do. Even with the non-sticking spray, it can definitely stick as that block tries to wiggle its way free from the mold. So you do kind of have to smack it around to get it out of the mold. Now, once you've poured your hot mixture of both your hot water and your gelatin into your mold, the mixture has to get to around 36 degrees Fahrenheit in order for it to set up and become hard. So take your mold and place it in the refrigerator. Now, if you have glass shelves in your refrigerator, you're going to want to cover it with something because it's quite possible that the heat from this container could end up cracking the glass. So we set ours in a towel and we cover it with cardboard to help it absorb some of the condensation. If you let your ballistic gel set in the refrigerator from 24 hours, it's definitely going to be set up and ready to shoot. You will notice our gelatin has a little bit more of a yellow tint to it. The DIY ones normally do. The ballistic FBI ones usually have a really good clear block to them. And that's kind of the benefit, I guess, of buying one of those is you get a really crystal clear block. Ours is a little more yellow, but it stops bullets and it works just the same and it lets you see it. Something to note is you really can't let your block sit around for that long. It will start to get moldy and things like that because of the moisture. So once you do it, you really need to go out and shoot it as soon as possible. And also if it's a hot day, it can't set out for as long as possible. So you need to set it out, shoot it so that you can be done. 
Now there are ways to go ahead and cut the bullet trail out of it and try to remove the debris from the block. And then you can actually melt down the gelatin and create the block again out of that. Now here on the channel, because we try not to skew any tests or have anything that could be different. And we try to keep all of our variables consistently the same. We don't really do this. Um, we shoot one block as much as we can to keep it fair in the test. And then after that, we completely discard the block and start new again. But if you're doing it at home just for fun and you want to try it and you're trying to save money, you could easily try to remove some of the debris, cut it out with a pocket knife, whatever you've got to do, and then you could boil it, strain it, and start again. Okay guys, so that's how we do our DIY ballistic gelatin for tests here on the YouTube channel. Like I said earlier, for 120 bucks, you could buy a legit block that you will only use once, or you could buy these materials and you could make about four or five, depending how good you are with the materials. Okay guys, that's it for this video. That's how we do it and you can do it too. Links for everything will be in the description below or in the article below if you're watching on the website. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.